I don't know if the name of the device is what has caused so much excitement or that just Ubiquiti makes some really, really nice Wi-Fi products. Then this is a, an integration of a Wi-Fi, a switch, and your router all in one box. But there seems to be a lot of people tagging me in this and a lot of excitement around the product. And uh, I'm kind of getting wise. I, I do like products that are nicely designed. I like nice UI design, which is something Unify is quite known for. Uh, but the Dream Machine didn't have one. And then magically one appeared. The folks over at Ubiquity sent one out. And it's a cylinder. <laughs> it's a really cool cylinder though. So let's talk about what this is. First, this is your integrated with the Unify controller, the Unify router, and a managed switch, and the Unify Wi-Fi all integrated into one, I'm not gonna call it a box, we're gonna call it one cylinder. And uh, it is nicely made, it's got a nice, I like the texture to it, so I've got my hands around it like this and holding it. It's pretty simple, uh, sleek design. And I'm gonna say this is aimed at maybe home users or uh, pro users at home that, uh, you know, maybe a small office even that goes, you know, I want all the things integrated into one package that's easy to set up that I don't have to go buy components for. And I've done plenty of videos on like how to get started with Unify. And I'm like, all right, if you want the Unify router to USG, you buy that thing. You're gonna have to find out whether you wanna host the cloud key yourself uh, or the cloud install yourself or host it on a cloud key or choose a hosting service. And then you gotta get your managed switch. And then you gotta get your Wi-Fi, and then you gotta adopt all these devices. And that sounds complicated, I know. And a lot of home users are looking for, I just wanna plug it in and get rolling with it. And we're gonna show you how you plug this in and get started with it in just a second. Now, like I said, this integrates Wi-Fi, so I'm I'm guessing it's at the top, so I point at the top of it, I'll assume, because it does look like a uh, standard Unify Wi-Fi device if we just looked at it like this. Um, then down below, we have the switch. We just have a standard four-port managed, managed switch on here, so it supports VLANs, one WAN port. And I already took a look at the software, and it does not appear at this time, and this is the nice thing about software-defined devices, is no, you are not going to be able to reassign this to be LAN or WAN too. So if you had dual connections, it's not really designed for that. Uh, just throwing it out there, I did look. But it does have a standard WAN port. So then we also have your power integrated. And this is a feature I like. So instead of dealing with the power brick, uh, that's separate, we have that in here. And we're gonna just open the box up real quick. And a nice, I like the soft touch again. Soft touch, power cord, and uh, fairly long too. I believe this is uh, seven, seven or eight feet of power cord. Oh yeah, wow. So. Okay, plenty of length on the power cord here. That is nice. So with that being integrated, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just pop that in there. There's really not much else to show you on the box. Uh, the only other thing on here is there is a power button. And it, I can't even make any noise. It's not, it, it's clicky feeling, but it's under the rubber here and it will turn the device on and off. I don't know if there's a hold it for so long, maybe it resets it. But uh, if you needed to power it off, you could turn it upside down there, but it's got a nice, actually it's a rubbery base. So this doesn't, if you notice it's sliding this, it's uh, slides here, but it's like super grippy rubber. So this thing won't, if you try to drag it, it's not easily, a matter of fact, it feels like it's gonna pull the cord out even trying to drag it. So it's pretty solid. And while we're talking, we're going to plug this in. So real quick, for those of you not familiar with the Unify, oh, we have a fan. So when it first starts up, there's a little bit of fan noise it makes. Get all the little pieces out of the way. Well packaged, da da da. I'm not a big unboxing person. I mentioned that before because, uh, you know, you throw away the packaging. But I got to admit, nice packaging. It came really nice and there wasn't anything difficult about taking it apart. Where does this live on your network? Well. Here's an example. This is just a prop. Uh, matter of fact, it's broken, by the way, <laughs> in case anyone heard it rattle. Uh, this is your standard, like a cable modem provided by a cable. And a lot of people in the US do have cable, but of course, some people have DSL. But this is going to come out of the cable modem. This is not replace it. This is your routing and Wi Fi. And then you would plug this into that one offset WAN port like that. So uh, it does not replace your cable modem that you may be renting depending on who your provider is. For example, Comcast here do charge us a rental fee. You still need to convert the coaxial cable to a RJ45 and then you would ideally put the cable modem in bridge mode over to the Unify WAN port uh, for setup. So that's where it's gonna live in your network. After that, you're gonna get full control. So. This thing is booting up, and while it's booting up, we're gonna drag my laptop over here. So here's the details that a lot of people want, and this is all on their website here. So it's a high performance dual band 802.11ac 4x4 wave two access point. And that noise tells me it's ready. 
So uh, I think that's kind of cool there that it has a sound effects that come on to tell you it's ready. I thought that was cool. Advanced security, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention system with deep packet inspection. Uh, this has been a challenge when you turn these features on on the previous lower powered USGs, they would not be able to get your full one gig. This claims to be able to do one gig with full um, IDS IPS, which is awesome. The Unify Connect Network Control and Interface, I've done a recent video on their latest version and it, uh, that is going to be loaded on here, so that works too. Uh, scalable through additional Unify devices connected to the LAN. This is an important to the LAN option because this does have the Unify controller built in and you can expand it and connect other Unify Wi-Fi devices, for example, but that's through the LAN of this. It doesn't act as a controller for maybe like other centralized systems. That's not what it was designed for. It's designed to, so to speak, handle itself. So unlike where you host a cloud key that's set up to host multiple sites, this is meant just to host itself on here. So here's a little bit more detail, so kind of a peek inside. I am not, because I looked and it appears to be, they have used glue, so I'm not tearing this thing apart. Maybe later, uh, I haven't decided if I want to or not, but throwing it out there, it does. it is glued together. Uh, let's jump to some real product specifics here. The ex exact dimensions are listed on here. It weighs uh, 2.3 pounds, four LAN, one WAN. does have one, re okay, that is a reset button. Um, so maybe hold it in, it would completely reset it. Can do one gig routing, so great if you have high-speed internet. Maximum power consumption of 26 watts, low wattage. And by the way, um, we've actually tested this and I factor reset it just for this video so I wanted to do a little bit of preliminary testing. Uh, even when you're running it and testing it, there's not fan noise coming out of it. It seems to come on when it first turns on, but I haven't heard a fan come on since. Supports all your uh, Wi-Fi standards, A, B, G, N, A, C, A, C, Wave 2, W, P, A, Enterprise, PSK, etc. So it's your standard unified device there, definitely. All the supports you're looking for. So now let's walk through the setup because that's where things are going to change a bit here. So we're going to connect it to Wi-Fi now. We're going to turn the Wi-Fi off and plug this device in and get it going. When you try to go anywhere, once you're connected to it, it redirects you. It actually, I'm offline as far as internet goes and it redirects you to the Dream Machine setup page. You know, this is my laptop hardwired in. That's kind of a neat feature. Um, I will also point out that it went to 192.168.1.1 network. So it assigned my laptop of 116. And I wanted to do this, 192.168.1.1. It is still UBNT, root and UBNT, when you have not configured it yet because this device is not set up. Um, that is gonna be what how we log into it if you wanted to. So. I haven't dug much into the custom version of Linux that they have in inside of here. I can run top and see things running. So I still see Java in here. I see Nginx uh, driving it. So yeah, pretty standard. Like I said, I believe this is the same thing that they run anyways. So what else we have here? There's the Java VM. Let's see what else is listening in here. Yeah, standard Unify stuff. So nothing, nothing groundbreaking here. All right, so we'll exit out of here and just go through your setup, maybe a later video. If I find something interesting there, I'll dig into it. So step one of nine, agree to the terms and conditions. We can do that. Step two, create a UI account. Now this is uh, a one unique feature compared to the other Unify systems is they are asking you to log in with your UI.com account. This is not necessary for the standard Unify software or the cloud keys uh, as of, at least as of November, 2019, it's not, but it is a standard feature of this that requires you to have an account. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and sign into my existing account. Next. This is kind of a nice feature as well. It's going to automatically, because I have 2FA on my account that I already have, and if you have a UI account, I please, please, please have 2FA turned on. And that is great that they have that. So uh, it automatically has 2FA and auto optimize. And this right here, for those that are worried, send diagnostics and performance information. Help Ubiquity developers improve diagnostics data will be sent to Ubiquity. They ask you. And I know this was a sticking point with the recent update they had where they chose to just make it part of the system. Now you have the option. And I, myself, when you ask me for diagnostic data, I am willing to give it because I like helping improve products that I use. Tom's Wi-Fi network. We'll call it Dream Wi-Fi. All right. 
and we'll go ahead and just do the basic setup here. Update schedule daily, 12 a.m., sure. Um, it figured out my time zones, Detroit, install latest firmware, Wi-Fi name, Dream Wi-Fi, looks good to me. Starting speed test. Now, uh, this worked once and failed once because this is not uh, directly connected to the internet. Uh, it is connected to my lab network. So the very first time I did this, I got an error. So hopefully it uh, doesn't error out this time, but it's it works fine if you connect it to a public IP. I've actually done a little bit of testing with this. Um, I only seen the error once, but like I said, it's in my lab network, double natted with some rules. So uh, take that for what it's worth, but it's gonna first do a speed test. And this is really important because a lot of people get uh, traffic management and traffic shaping uh, misunderstood. One of the important aspects is that when you do traffic shaping, that it understands that your down, what your download speeds are and what your upload speeds are. The reason why to have proper queuing, you need to under, have that number because it's not just about giving priority to one packet over another. It's about having those numbers and varying the percentages to make sure that it operates properly. Done, setting up network. And uh, the first time I did this, it did take quite a while, but I think just because it was uh, just setting it up and doing firmware updates, et cetera. So hopefully it takes a little less time because now it has all the latest firmware on it. And the device turned blue. Like this, so you can see it's now blue and it's doing the same thing uh, here as it is doing right here. Oh, and LastPass keeps saying I'm still not actually connected to the internet. So it hasn't actually started full routing yet. Setup is complete. Now we can manage it through the Unify dashboard, unify.ui.com or unify.home, which means it's gonna manage it directly. So we're gonna go the direct route here, rather than through the dashboard. Proceed because it's a self-signed certificate. And the first thing we're gonna do is launch the Dream Machine part of this. So we go here, your UI account password, hit log in. Now this is awesome. So I'm gonna put my 2FA in here. And that means right from the get go, I have two factor when I log into the actual device itself. Now this is something I don't even think is supported on the cloud key right now, not that I'm aware of, where you have this full two factor. Uh, maybe they've added it and I didn't see it there. It wasn't there in the past. And unfortunately what a lot of people do is leave everything at default, which is UBNT, UBNT and never change it. Uh, thank you for other IT companies who we've taken over IT for. People go, we don't know how to get into our controller and I find it at default. <laughs> um, they kind of are forcing their people's hand to change the default. So I do like that. Performance-wise, we're here we're running at about 49 centigrade. Uh, CPU low, 33% memory usage, 7% uh, stored EMMC, C and two uh, backup is 8% here. All right, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, I like that they have those stats. The controller itself, so you can open up the network. Status active up for 13 minutes. Latest version 5.12.22. Under general, we can change the time. We can factory reset it or reboot it and make sure the firmware is up to date and it's up to date with the latest version. Now let's go back over here and launch this. And you notice up here at the top, it's still doing the same thing. It's uh, 8443, your standard port, 192.168.11.8443. Tom at lawrencesystems.com, put in my password and it's gonna prompt me once again for 2FA. So we've got now 2FA on this. I like this a lot. Some people may find it inconvenient because well, security is sometimes inconvenient. So that's, that's just gonna be a factor. Once we're in though, we're standard unified dashboard, but a little bit different. And I say that because when you go over here to devices, you have a little pull down here. And here is each component of it. So we're gonna go here to the edit and we'll do a little pop out. I like the way that they support this still. But please note, so right here, I'm on. if you're on the device, if you're on the gateway, if you're on the switch, or if you're on the Wi-Fi, it changes but doesn't give you separate individual modular windows on there. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change. And if you go to name the device, you can name it here. We're gonna call it Dreamy uh, uh, Cylinder. I can't call it cube. I might keep on to call it a cube or box, but it's not. It's a dreamy cylinder. Save. And now it gives it a name on here. 
but you can see that it's not um, individually naming each component. Not that I think that really matters because it's all physically one thing, but uh, just know it's a little bit different because of the way they have this showing up in here. But it's, once again, I'm not gonna dive deep into the full features of the Unify software here because that's just, I have plenty of videos on that particular topic, but being able to have easy access to all these features right inside of this is definitely great. Now, I mentioned that the switch was managed. So if we do go here to switch and we go to ports and we'll pop that out real quick, you still get all those features that you get. So you have the um, network port. If there was other VLANs, they'd show up in here as an option. Uh, you can create profiles. The only thing I don't see is it. some of the other switches have different extra features on the port. Um, like I believe they have egress limits and things like that. That appears to be missing from here, but not a huge deal in my opinion that it doesn't have that. But having uh, all integrated into one place, including, let's see, the map option here, which it starts showing devices that are connected. So I can see the device connected. That's cool. Uh, link labels, that's on here. Floor plan map, if you wanted to add a floor plan for it. It currently doesn't have a default floor plan. And uh, so does it have an image? Okay, so you can use Google Maps. It will find my location, load an API key. So it's still the same Unify software uh, for any of those advanced features. The threat management feature we can enable on here and turn that on. So it has all the other options. This is the new five, uh, this is the beta interface and it seems to have defaulted to this where we can uh, go to the more advanced one, which if you like classic mode, that's right here. So you can see the controller, the dream machine, et cetera, et cetera. Site options, very beginning one right here where they have uh, all the site options and everything else. So I guess it's pretty much straightforward Unify here um, from here on out. Now, one thing I'll take a quick look at here is automatic backup. Apparently by default, it's not turned on. So I do recommend that if you get this to turn on the automated backups, uh, just backup for data retention settings only. Once a month is probably fine, once a week, but just so you, if you ever have a problem with it, you're able to roll back to those settings without having to reset it up again, that's important. And of course, downloading your uh, backup once you have it configured in case you ever have to do a restore, uh, that would be important. Now, like I said, you can adopt other devices in here as long as you're connecting them through the LAN port of this, but the opposite, let's say you wanted to adopt this to another device, like an external controller. There seems to be some people that posted some ways to do it. It's not really designed to do that. It was ideally meant to run self-contained in itself like it does, which I really think is a pretty, if you're buying this product, that's more what it's use case for. It doesn't mean you can't hack around and do something different, but if you're looking for kind of a turnkey solution, which currently has an MSRP of 299 that integrates a powerful Wi-Fi, a managed switch, so you can do segmenting your network, you can do uh, VLANs on this, you can have more than one SSID uh, on this and create the two separate networks or three or up to four separate networks on the Wi-Fi if that's what you feel is necessary uh, for your devices. All integrated for a package for uh, one low price, not bad. I think it's a good purchase for that. If you're someone going, it's just not advanced enough for me, then well, maybe it's not for you. Uh, if you're looking to individually buy each of the components because you want to set up a larger, more scaled out network, absolutely. Uh, I would say this is designed for easily the home user. So the pretty easy, straightforward setup and the fact that it adds some security, which has been very much lacking in the home user market where it's gonna put your account information is, and I recommend 2FA, but it'll have all that tied in and resets the passwords from default even on the controller, which is something that gets overlooked even in some of the corporate environments where people leave certain access control systems, the back end of them at default settings, if, we find that frequently, they change all that for you. It automatically updates the firmware. So I think for home users, excellent purchase. I think for people who you know, are maybe a small business or small office with a few people working on it that want, once again, an integrated turnkey package, it's pretty good. For those of you looking for something a lot more advanced, well, I like the built-in router. It's basically a USG router that's faster than the standard original USG, so it does have the speed but it's still gonna lack some of those advanced features. The fact that it only has one WAN port means failover has to happen outside of this if you want multiple WAN. And of course, multiple WAN IPs, well, that's a challenge to itself with the USG line of routing, but that's not really a home user concern like ever. So it comes down to think about your use case and think about how you wanna use it. So I think the project is good. I think it's a good product for, like I said, the the demographics that I had mentioned. And uh, it's kind of a cool looking cylinder. and. I think it's pretty neat. It actually is aesthetically like setting it there and looking on the wall with it. Not bad. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.